landed property design secrets that seriously raise capital value, formally kept secrets unless you were the client. 10 steps to ensure your property's capital value is raised. Macro overview. In point number one, we talked about understanding the overall marketplace and knowing where the value perception is when it comes to how people view your property and how to cater to that perception of value by incorporating the right components in there. Now in point number two, we're also going to go on a macro scale and we're going to talk about zoning. Zoning is found in every jurisdiction and even though we are focusing today on Singapore, you can relate it to your country as well. Now zoning means the kind of land use that an authority will allow your country or your district or precinct uh, to be used for. For example, on the island of Singapore, it's divided in various zones. You have residential, commercial, industrial, heritage zones, downtown, conservation zones, and so on and so forth. So let's focus on residential zone. In Singapore, the residential zone is divided into sub-zones, terrace, semi-D, detached, bungalow, and good class bungalow. Now there are controls that um, restrict you from converting your particular subzone into another subzone because of the way they would like the whole island to be harmonious in its planning to vary from a low density into a medium density into a high density. So for example, if you are uh, having a, a bungalow plot, it's unlikely that you can subdivide it into smaller plots in order to make more money out of it. Or if you wanted to amalgamate two smaller plots, like uh, two terrace houses and make it into a bungalow, for example, because the zone does not allow you to do so. This is important because when you start to plan on adding value into your development, it's got to be within the classification of the zone that your property is found in. That way we can still maximize the potential but without infringing on the authority regulations. So that's important. Now, apart from zoning, okay, we are going to look at the amount of built-up area that you can put up within a plot. You see, in, res in residential zoning in Singapore, it's not based on plot ratio. Plot ratio is a formula of the overall area that you build up, which they call it the gross floor area, divided by the land plot area, multiplied by 100, that gives you a kind of percentage. Residential in Singapore, especially landed housing, is not based on plot ratio. It is based on the setback from the boundary line. Now, I've had clients who bought a uh, bungalow site and they tried to maximize the built up area of the house by building all the way to the setback line where there's a certain amount of setback in the front of the plot, on the side of the plot, and the back of the plot. So, when they try to maximize the uh, plot uh, in order to build a larger built, -in, built up area within the house, that can also be risky because if you don't have enough budget set aside to ensure that you can fulfill the whole financing of the project of your house, you might end up with a half completed house. So uh, you got to be able to scale your house correctly. So I talked about that in the first section about the 10 mistakes that owners make where they overscale their properties. That's something that you got to watch out for. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that just because you have enough setback line, you got to maximize it or you have a big plot of land, you should maximize it because it's better that you design a house, whether it's a reconstruction or a new construction or a remodeling where you add more area to the house, you don't have to fully utilize the full footprint of the house all the way up to the setback lines just because you can. The reason for this is because it's better to keep some of that extra land area for a future uh, expansion your house when there's a need to do so or where you find that the marketplace can cater to, the, to that demand but for now you just better off designing and planning for a size that is suitable for your own, own lifestyle and your family and then later on expand on the other areas right so zoning requirements and control typically determines not only the footprint of your building, the setback lines, but also the number of stories and the roof configuration particularly. So in Singapore, you can go up to 
three stories in certain districts and certain districts can only go up to two stories or you can add up an attic on top of it as well which is kind of like a half story so on Sentosa Co we have done um, design of about 22 houses uh, in Sentosa Cove, there is a further setback line from the canal where all the, uh, the yachts are moving around uh, and also a setback line from the road as well as from the neighbours. Why do the Sentosa Cove have a larger setback? Is to give that sense of privacy. So actually this comes to the same point again. If you don't re overbuild, if you don't overbuild, you actually have a, a larger sense of privacy which makes your house more exclusive if you're having a big uh, plot of land. So try not to overbuild and keep it for the future instead. So there's a ratio also that's important between what's built up and what's not built up. In, in terms of architecture definition, built up means anything that has a foundation, a roof and walls. And even if there is no walls walled up on all four sides, as long as it has a structure overhead, it's a built up area. When you design for a house, you have to pay particular attention to what is built up and what is not built up in your house. Because if everything is very, very much walled up and you don't have any um, transparency in the house, it actually brings down the value of your home because people don't like too much walls. They want to see what's inside. Now, depending on your location, your weather might not permit it and you need to have something more solid then go for something that's more solid. Now, or you might be going for a particular style like a Rococo or Baroque, a Renaissance look or classical look. You might want to go with more walls as well because that's the style that you're going for. But I would say in today's context, it's better to go with the climate and the context of modernity to do something, to design a house that is more in time, in sync with the time and in sync with the marketplace. So that when you actually enjoy the home, and when people perceive the home, there's a lot more transparency in the home. Now, when I, when I talk about transparency, I mean that uh, between the indoor spaces and outdoor spaces, there has to be good linkage. And I see that a lot of people today, especially the younger, um, the younger occupants, as well as the uh, more mature occupants, they prefer to have more outdoor spaces yeah, in ratio with the indoor spaces. Uh, the reason for this is because they, they have the freedom to enjoy them. For example, you want to have your breakfast, right? You're preparing your, your meal from the, uh, from the kitchen. You want to have an outdoor patio that you can get to in order to be uh, sheltered from the sun but still enjoy the garden and the fresh air. So that indoor-outdoor space continuity and extension and connection is very important for the lifestyle factor that we talked about earlier. So I would say that if you want to have a modern house, then go with say a 60 to 70% built-in area and maybe a 30 to 40% outdoor area. Still sheltered, but probably open on three sides and then with the one wall behind you, either with a window or a door that connects from the kitchen to the patio, for example. Or if you're talking about balconies, yes, balconies, patios, and all these uh, outdoor spaces, they are adding up into the overall uh, 30 to 40 percent that I'm talking about. Right? Now, if you have very solid walls uh, and you particularly want to follow a, a style, then I would suggest that you have more windows because the windows will allow you to interact with the uh, external environment and allow you to have that light and air come in. And this is where the value perception goes up because if you're able to control that light and air, allow it to come in, but at the same time shut it off as, if there's rain or too much sun, uh, that uh, is a, a, a very, very valuable characteristic in the house. So I'm not going to go into whether you should do a modern house or a particular styling of a house, but I would definitely want to say that go with as much um, outdoor spaces as you possibly can and bring in the landscaping, not only into the outdoor spaces that are sheltered, also into the garden, all the way from the garden through that and then also into that uh, the sheltered uh, patio space. So now, uh, finally, I want to talk about another area which is so important. Now, this is where you are budgeting to spend on your house. Remember I mentioned um, one of the classic mistakes of owners is that they put too much money in a particular component of their house renovation. Is that, for example, 
Uh, I mentioned about a client that uh, wanted to have green marble on the wall, right? So in the end, he, he tried to sell it, and in fact, it, it created a negative perception uh, with the potential customers. You gotta ask yourself now: if you put in any money into a particular installation or component in your house, whether it's gonna be harmonious with the rest of your house, and whether it's gonna bring up the value when people look at it. Now, if it doesn't, then not only are you overspending, you are actually shooting shooting yourself in the foot because this is called overcapitalization. Because no matter how much money you put into that component, it doesn't add up anymore to the value of your house because it is already determined. For example, now uh, you might want to have a very, very specific kind of uh, stone, let's say from the UK called Kirkstone on your kitchen top. Now Kirkstone is ex ex extremely expensive and it's hard to import over into uh, Singapore because you won't have enough quantity and you can't even buy from a supplier. Now, if you wanted to just have that particularly on your kitchen countertop, it's a good thing, but it may not necessarily bring you the value perception that you're trying to achieve. On the other hand, if the item is harmonious, but at the same time, it's, it's a special feature, it's a special piece where the architect or designer has seen the way it complements with the rest of the interior design, and it becomes what you call a signature piece. Now that's different because that's going to add to the overall value perception of the space, of the uh, quality of the home. And definitely it's something that would add value. So if you're unsure, speak to your architect or consultant. Uh, I, was, I was certainly very happy to talk to you about this uh, somewhere in the future uh, if we get to work together. But definitely you need to have a sense of cohesion coherence and harmony with the rest of the house if you want to do a special feature because if not it's going to be overcapitalization. So that's it for number point two and I'm going to now bring you to point three.